Hey kids, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and man, do we have an awesome show for you guys. We do. From the powerhouse by coastal talent agency Atlas Talent, we have Heather Dame, formerly Heather Virgo of the LA office. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Okay, guys, our guest is the VP Director of Development here in Los Angeles for the awesome bi-coastal agency, Atlas Talent. She has so much wisdom and insight to share, so get ready to take notes because we are getting buzzed with the fabulous voice of our agent, Heather Dame, formerly Heather Virgo. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Let's Heather. go there right now. First of all, congratulations on your wedding, which is coming Thank up. Thank you. Thank very, you. Very, very soon. So we want to put this out there to you guys. You've known her as Heather Virgo, many of you. As of the end of May, Heather I will Dame. Be, yep, Heather Dame. Yep, Which is Heather a great Dame. name. <laughs> I don't think I would take it if it weren't a great name. Right? Great name. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping my name, dude. That's oh, so that's cool. So great. great. So you guys make note of that, and uh, after the end of May. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, it's very exciting. I, I'm like, I'm more excited than you guys right now. I got to tell you because <laughs> we've been talking to Heather for like. Five years. <laughs> I think like it's six. seven. Maybe six or seven. Eight, However, yeah. whenever you started, oh, yeah. yeah, like seven years. What persistence? Hey Heather, yeah. we'd like to have you on our show. Oh, uh -huh. maybe next year. Oh, my other line's ringing. Let's wait another six months. Yeah. Remember when One I threw Harry gun at you huh? yes. at a party? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So uh, you asked me, and I said, "Here's Harry Don. Meet him." And Harry then he came Dunn up. Was exactly. playing the role of Heather. Virgo, Dane. We, we had to settle for Harry Dunn. We really <laughs> wanted Heather Virgo. So anyways, we're so, we're so excited because we, we finally Harry. have you on the show yes. as Heather Dame. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we don't even have Heather to her Virgo anymore. This is crazy. This is yeah. um, changing things up yeah. on you. I know. Yeah. But uh, so um, listen, can we get right into it? Because totally. we have some yep. really cool questions yeah. for you. You want to start? Um, the what? Are you starting? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so... Outside of great acting chops, which everybody should have, at least if they're going to have a major a agent such as Atlas, um, what are some other uh, talent needs that a voice actor should have in order to be successful in today's industry? So that is a very big question. It is. Um, it's a big question because with how diverse voiceover talent is now and with technology they can live anywhere yep. so I kind of look at it as a Venn diagram which sometimes people understand that immediately if they mm -hmm. were a, like a math and science geek like me in high school <laughs> um, so uh, not everybody's gonna do everything and it depends where they live and it depends their skill sets and not everybody can do everything mm -hmm. um, just by matter of fact of schedule you know if you're an animation person and you're working four-hour sessions multiple times a week you're not really gonna be able to do as many promos as someone who sits in their home studio and does promos right. true and if you live in the middle of Tennessee you're not really gonna be able to go out as much on animation and that's just the the reality of how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it, there's not one answer to that. Um, if you are someone living in the middle of the country, um, you know you have to know what your opportunities would look like living where you live and with the skill set you have. So if you're living in the middle of the country, you want to aim towards the commercials and promos and that sort of stuff where they exactly. want you to have a home studio. Right. Yes. They right. prefer it. In fact, Narration. they're not yeah. going to book a studio for you. They, mm -hmm. You have to have a home studio to go out for those jobs. Um, so you want to hedge in that direction. If you're a character person sitting in the middle of the country, you have a bit of a conundrum because the reality is that most of the stuff you're going to go out for is going to be narration and promos and commercials, and they're looking for more of an announcer, and you're a character person. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times in that instance, those people wind up moving out to L.A. Like the or, animation, video game stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and as much as that stuff is opening up a little bit more yeah. to studios in different states, um, they really... They really want to be in the room with you. They really want to direct yeah. you. They really want it to be that kind of thing. And they're really rarely willing to use your home studio because they can't control the specs of your home studio. Exactly. Right? So if you're in the middle of the country, those are the kind of skill sets and things you want to train in. Um, it, it, it's important to be a really good actor, but at the same time, it's important to learn the skill set of each facet of voiceover. Exactly. So, um, so if you're one of those people, you know, you want to be coaching in commercials and promos and narration and that stuff and coaching yeah. regularly. What yeah. about business yeah. traits that they might need? Like 
do they just need to be great at acting or is there anything else that they should really be savvy at in order to like, you know, make the business side of it work? So I, I hesitate to say this in the way that I'm going to say this because I'll caveat it afterwards. Uh -huh. um, they need to be a great networker. But that doesn't mean that you are the squeaky wheel and... It doesn't mean restraining order. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, the thing about networking, I think, that is difficult, especially for actors, is you have to find a way to connect with someone where you, there's no desperation attached to it. Right. Yes. Um, because when people sense desperation, they just kind of run from it. I definitely do. Um, yeah. You know, it, I can a feel it. Do, yeah. yeah, it's just it's an uncomfortable feeling to be around, and so people don't want to be with that. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to find a way to connect to people on a human level. And I, I kind of look at it as you know we're all human beings, and there's a way to connect to someone that isn't about work necessarily. Yeah. Right, and right. I think that's often how those sort of networking connections make yeah. sense to people. So yeah. you Definitely. have to be a great networker, but you also have to find a way not to do it in a way that puts people off. And exactly. There's, there's a balance. About, like, how, you know, it's not always about what can you do for me, it's more like what can I do for you, if mm -hmm. you kind of frame it in mm -hmm. a way that's about how can I help you, Heather, instead of, Heather, I need what you have to offer me. Yes, and if you, and if you connect with someone on a human level, it, it might feel more like your colleagues exactly. in your approach, mm -hmm. rather than it feels like you are asking that person for something from them. Exactly. Um, it's hard for actors. It's a difficult position to be in, yeah. honestly. It really is, yeah. like, because yeah. you have to sell yourself but at the same time, you have to find a way to do it that feels genuine. Yeah. That uh, line is so fine. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of it is, so It's a very fine line. It is. Well, it and is. It's, it's, it's different for every rope, person, really and is. everybody's personality is different. So Completely. So sometimes you're going to run across people, and, and actually, I would say even as an agent, I do the same thing. That's my job. I, I sell. I have to go out, and I have to pitch business, and, and I go out to the people who buy the talent, and ask them to work with us. Yeah. And so, you know, before they want to pick our talent, they have to like me and want to work with me. And then, you know, hopefully we do a fantastic job for them so they want to keep coming back. And then the talent does a fantastic job and it's all, you know. Yeah. But I, we have the same, the same thing. I have to find a way to be genuine and yeah. not have it be. Right, because you can, as an agent, have desperation because no. that doesn't work for the buyers either. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> We're all in the same boat, people. Yes. <laughs> we are. We're working together. We are. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, it may not always seem like that, yes. but it is the True. reality. It, it totally yeah. is. What about... Um, since we were talking just about networking, but yeah. what about like the reality of somebody, you know, posting on social media, everything that they're doing, when they're doing it, whether it's out or not. I know that you probably have some comments on that. And you uh, don't have to be that nice about it if you don't want to. Cause <laughs> so <laughs> we like direct. This is a touchy situation. Yeah. It is a touchy situation, and I, I, I have a very, you know, in, in general, actually, I think everyone at Atlas has the same uh -huh. <laughs> opinion on it. So I think across the board, I can speak for, you know, the rest of the company as well. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Um, if you want to post about stuff you're doing after it's out when you can point to someone where to see it or where to watch it and that is the only time you should never ever post anything about your auditions particularly about your auditions mm -hmm. about what jobs you're booking that week where you are you know i've had people get called out for taking a picture in the um in the area you know, in, in the room that they're in, and there happens to be like a painting in the background, People and it's confidential, and you know, and they, and they're not psyched. The buyer's really unhappy about it. Right. Yeah. The, but, so one of the reasons is that, you know, is be careful of confidentiality when you're at bookings and those mm -hmm. sort of things. But also, and I don't think actors necessarily realize this, like, I would actually tell you a lot of times I find the actors who are posting the most aren't necessarily working the most. The people who are working the most are working. They They're too busy They're to be too posting. busy to I post know. on Facebook about yes. their jobs. Right. I mean, in reality. Um, and so it, it winds up being this, you know, it's that Facebook social media thing about, mm -hmm. you know, where, where you see, you, you now see every single person that you've ever met in your entire life and totally. how happy they look on Facebook. People and that you didn't even want to know. How amazing their <laughs> lives are. Hashtag and, actor life. Yes, you ah. know, but, but not even just <laughs> actors, in life in general. It's yes. like, social media phenomenon, yes. you know, I'm like, oh my God, that person has three kids and they look so happy and oh my God, my life isn't like that, you know, and I think that's what happens to actors. So, you know, I think you're perpetuating that is one thing that's occurring, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. also talking about your auditions, those should be c considered not just confidential with the people you're auditioning for, but with your agent. Yeah. Because as an agent, our job, we basically, you know, my viewpoint of it is we kind of have two jobs. You know, one is to go get the business and bring it in, and the second is to try to decrease the competition. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is increasing the competition. You're telling everybody where to go find that audition, and they will go find it. They wow. will go tell their agents, and they will go find it. How do you think that. that's how people find out about this stuff? This is... 
this is what occurs. My friend has this audition. Can you get it for me? And right, so one, something right. that was now exclusive to your agency is, is now, now not. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, so you are literally undermining your own ability to mm. book the jobs. Wow. Yeah. So uh, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Just yeah. wait till it's out there in the exactly. universe. Here's and the link to us. Here's the link to where here's you can see to, yes. my commercial. Yes. Here's the link to where you can see the animated series I'm in or the trailer for the it, movie and I'm it's in. Done. It's a done deal. Yeah. yeah, it's a done deal. Cool. Gone. Hopefully, you've been paid by then lots of time ago. You yep. know? Yeah. Obviously, not every talent that submits to Atlas gets signed. Yeah. Even if they're great. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yes. So, can you talk about what some of the reasons may be? Because, you know, it's easy to personalize, oh, it must be something about me, but there's so much going on on your side that may have nothing to do with there's the talent. There's so much going on on our side that has nothing to do with yeah. the talent. You know, I think Bob Bergen was one of the first people, when I first met him years ago, and mm -hmm. I'm sure he's said this to you, he went and took he, he went and took a class when he first became a voiceover talent in yes. agenting, the business side of it. Um, and he would always talk about how we took that class because it helped him understand what his agent does for a living. Mm -hmm. And so as an actor, I think you really do have to, first of all, you need to have compassion for people in general in life. I think it's yes. just an important thing in way of being. <laughs> um, but, you know, have compassion for an agent. Have a thought of, you know, what is their day like and what do they do for a living and, you know, and, and how does that look? So when you're an actor sending an email out to an agency, regardless of whether you're referred or it's just a random email, um, you have to understand they might have have 300 emails that are pressing in their inbox to deal with that day. Yeah. Um, and so that may be something that they put a star on and put it to the side. And, and you're not back. exaggerating that. N no. Uh, uh, oh, that was actually bit. a very small number. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, yeah, right. A small I didn't want to sound too exaggeratory, so I, I, created a very, I created a small number. If okay. you ask agents how many emails are in their inbox on a daily basis, it's more than that. But wow. we'd sound kind of crazy to tell you. So, yeah. you know, keep yeah. it. Now yeah. I feel really special that when I email you, you actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's a yes. there's like a spot checking, like you know, you know, you you know who you're working with. You can yeah. check everything. You just you'd get used to it. Yeah. Um, but there is that reality where and and the and our jobs first and foremost are to represent the talent that we have completely and fully and try mm -hmm. to work and get them new work and help their current work. And so at the end of the day, you know. Unless there's a huge missing on our roster, it's not necessarily the top priority for the agency to be bringing on new people to develop every single day. Right. right. If that makes sense. Of course. And it's not that we don't do it. We do do it. Yeah, we absolutely do it. Do it. Yeah. Um, but it definitely, there's so many factors that exist within it, but we have to first and foremost represent our talent we represent yeah. and do our duty to them. So, you know, oftentimes um, we won't sign people when we feel like they might um, be right in a category where we already have a couple people that we're working with and developing and that we're really trying to get out there because yeah. we just feel like it would dilute, you know, our efforts for those people. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be fair to the person that wants to be brought on to the agency right. because we'd be bringing them on knowing that they're not going to get the same efforts that the other couple people are. Exactly. Um, and that's not fair. And we, we would rather say no to someone than not do a great job for right. them. You right. know, like we, you know, we we actually give a crap. <laughs> We'd like to sleep at night, you know, <laughs> which, like and, yeah, and do good, a good job yeah. for people. Yes. You know, which I think I think people assume that you don't. But we do. We care. We it, it's it's our it's our job to try to help procure business for people and that's their livelihoods and that's their houses and their kids college education and mm -hmm. you know we understand that um so we take that seriously um so there is that aspect of it and as at atlas one of the reasons it's very hard to get signed there um really has to do with the fact that we try to keep a more boutique roster mm -hmm. um and we're bi-coastal right. and whenever we sign someone on both sides of the agency agree yeah. I see. And that's kind of our stopgap measure to make sure right. that we are working together and the people that we bring on are supported on both coasts and by multiple agents and, mm -hmm. you know, don't wind up getting lost on a list. Like, you know, so one person doesn't bring them on yeah. and then, you know, something happens to them. They leave and then suddenly that talent doesn't right. have right. an agent yeah. or anyone to support them. Um, you know, and that way we're also efficient with our roster. 
you know, really yeah. utilizing our yeah. roster really well because totally. everybody knows them, knows what they can do, and we all work together and talk together. So that, does that yeah. mean that LA Talent gets to read for uh, yes. East Coast stuff yeah. and vice versa? Yeah, we're one company. Yeah. So uh, most bi-coastal talent agencies, I, uh, the they're, best they're way- They're kind of separated. Yeah, the best way I can describe it is like they're franchises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they, they're, they're the same corporate headquarters, but they're kind of, they're franchises. Right. They're run by yeah. different people, and so there's a little bit of, they're even slightly competitive. Um, at Atlas, we are fully one team of people and working on both coasts. You know, right. for instance, even in the commercial department, they split up the states that they work in. So, you know, Tim in New York has certain states that he pitches for commercials, where Michaela and Leah have different states, and so that we're not even competing within the agency in any way, shape, or form, really That's being efficient great. to mm -hmm. pitch the business. You guys are smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's a very different, So and we <laughs> yeah. represent our talent across the board. Yeah. So we represent mm -hmm. them everywhere. You know, that's yeah. and, and they're they're represented by all the agents. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that I love about Atlas um, is that you guys from day one, from the moment that you guys went strictly from New York and you know moved out here and started getting things going, you weren't the type of agency that looked at, okay, here's how agents do their stuff and we're just gonna keep doing it the same way that everybody's always done it since 19, you know, 74, right? <laughs> you guys, you guys are like, you go after stuff. You yeah. plan things, you change things. You're not yeah. afraid of, you know, taking chances and looking at where you know, the trends are shooting and say, you know what, if we want to exist and be really, 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 uh, you know, a strong agency, we're gonna have to change this, 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 and that, so let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was the impetus between coming out here. This was John yeah. Wasser was coming back and forth between LA and New York for I think like ten years before we opened the office out here. And he built some of the top trailer talent in the country doing that. Yeah, you did. And they told him you need to live in LA and he was like, No, <laughs> I can do it this way. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it yeah. this way. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I mean this was kind of his brainchild coming out here. You know, him yeah. and Lisa have always been on the avant garde of um, the industry. You know, they're on the avant garde of the home studio movement as well. So it's it, I think probably coming into LA, then it it you know it gave people an awareness mm -hmm. that they've been doing that, but they've been doing it for the in, since the inception right. of Atlas, yeah. you know, the entire yeah. time. It's just the thought process and model of the agency. In Absolutely. General. And yeah. do you guys do you guys meet about that? Do you guys talk about like, and if you can't talk about this, we're totally cool. But do you do you actually meet about you know the things that are happening out there and how you guys are going to the strategy? You know, pl place yourselves to take advantage of those trends or things or whatever. Changes? I would say a lot of the processes are more organic. You know, um, but yes, I mean, yes, we're always talking and communicating and and having conversations, and yeah. you know, they're they're always thoughtful in that way. And John Wasser is one of those people who gets that. Like it is like his, you yeah. know, it it is something he is just amazing at. That's yeah. his foresight is. I know, man. His <laughs> gift. Yeah, I know. you know. Yeah. So so you know they they're always talking about it. Yeah. Um, and they're always looking at that, and they're yeah. always open to hearing what we have to say. And you know, we're just—it's very collaborative and organic. And that's—that's yeah. that's actually how all of this occurred. It's always been a very organic, collaborative process, and it kind of just became what it is. It wasn't meant to be the agency it is when we first came out here. It right. wasn't. The intention was just to super serve our talent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then organically, it turned into more. Yeah. Right. You are super serving. Absolutely. And, yes. the, and, the, and the thing is, is this. You guys, like you said earlier, you know, you, you want to operate mm -hmm. as a boutique agency, if you will, <laughs> but you're not. I mean, yeah. you guys are humongous and you have a big roster of giants on your, right? Yeah. Yeah, you but, they're, but they're, it's still, it's the Venn diagram. Not everything crosses over. So it all depends on right. your perspective, yeah. you know, on what you're looking to book. You know, and then and then you hone in, and it isn't necessarily as big of a roster as other places. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. It does. But one thing yeah. that I was I was going to segue into this before I was interrupted. No, I'm kidding. I'm well, totally you know. <laughs> no, no. That when I the times that I've ever talked to 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 Wasser, and I've asked him about a certain person that maybe has been with the agency for a gazillion years, and that maybe that person thinks they might be a little lost you know, at the agency or something like that because something's not happening or is happening. And I talked to John. John knows everything yes, about does. that actor. Yes. He yes. can take you down to yesterday yes. and 10 years that yes. and blah, blah, blah yep. and what he did. And he knows and, their dog's name. And he knows their dog's name. Yes. It's incredible. So yeah. so nobody gets lost in the shuffle. No, we You guys know what's happening. Mm -hmm. We communicate, we talk. I love well, that. Well, and there's a difference. I think the difference is everybody has ownership. Right. Not just one agent has ownership of the talent. Like we all have mm -hmm. ownership. And that's why we do it the way we do it. 
Um, you know, and I think it's a really smart philosophy and it makes sense. And there are moments where there are people that I've really wanted to champion and sign yeah. and, and, you know, it just wasn't in the cards at that moment. And sometimes right. it happened later and sometimes it didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, but I'd rather have it the way we do it than every agent be, you know, on a team just, of yeah, one. Just yeah, wild, every yeah, just wild carding and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. for the talent, you know, at least the feedback that, you know, that we hear is that the talent are very happy with that and they feel supported and they feel like they have multiple people to talk to. And, mm -hmm. exactly. you know, they, they're often saying that out there in the world, so, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're hopeful yeah. that that's good, what good is word being on the street. Said. Yes. Yeah. Good yes. words on the street. So there's a lot of people watching that are poised, ready to submit, right? Yes. For Atlas, what are some key do's and don'ts in the submission process? That's a good question. So I would say, you know, anything that you would do in online dating should be fairly similar. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, when you're online dating, you want to make sure you write in complete sentences and there's capitalization and you spell everyone's names correctly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you're selling yourself, you're putting your best foot forward. And as an agent, you want to know that when you put your talent out there in the world, that they're selling themselves well and that they're a good extension of the agency mm -hmm. because, you know, we sell you. And then you go out there and you're an extension of us exactly. and reflect back on the agency as well. And so it's, it's really a team yeah, effort. So if you can't sell yourself in an email to me or to us and you can't spell people's names right and you can't, you know, the same thing as a job interview. You know, right. there, there is going to be and there's no punctuation and, and grammar is off and, and you, you know, any of those sort of things. Why would we want to send you out in the world mm -hmm. in that way as well? So you've got to know how to sell yourself. You know, it's the same thing as getting any job. So that's really, I'd say, the biggest do and don't, yeah. is to know that I find people like, um, John Mosser is spelled J-O-N-N. -N. N -N. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> pet peeve of mine, yeah. whenever I see people, because in his email, his email <laughs> is J-O-N-N -N at atlastalent.com, yeah. and mm -hmm. oftentimes I see people write J-O-H-N over and over again. Yeah. And, um, and that's a pet peeve of mine, because I'm like, well, he owns the company. It should you be. You gotta I spell mean, his name right. Yeah. You should know, um, yeah. You know, just want to, like, you know, it's respectful. Yeah. Um, so that sort of stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe nitpicky, but at the same time, you know, we, we like to make sure that you're presenting yourself really well. And that's yeah. what will have us pay attention yeah. when we're looking at it's it. It's a business. Yeah, it's it a is business. a business. Um, so that's my biggest, like, mm -hmm. don't. Um, right. right. Um, yeah. Is uh, um, like a contact email to you, somebody's looking for representation or something, um, do you want this contact email to be you know, short and to the point or be real? Do you want it to sound like, you know, they worked on it for seven weeks? <laughs> How do you think it reads best for you? Ra you, know, all, you know, having the names right and punctuation, but do you need a lot of information on that email? It depends on the actor and what they do. Okay. So, um, so it, it just depends. Um, if you have a referral of someone that we trust, that's helpful mm -hmm. um, because it, you know, it raises our attention to look at it. Right. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to get you signed of or, not. or that yeah. you could send up. I've had people send completely random emails and we've signed them. You know, it happens all the time, actually, yeah. mm -hmm. because we do listen to demos. We yeah. might not listen to them and at the exact time you send them. Right. Yeah. I've been known to listen to them a month later sometimes and then yeah. right back to the person when yeah. I get caught up. Um, but we listen as soon as we can and we do listen to them and we may not write back to them all. So yeah. that's just something for actors going to your question earlier. Um, yeah. You know, we may listen and not write back. And essentially that means we're probably at this time not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we write back is where there's something that was, you know, piqued in our interest. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but, you know, other than that, it just depends what you're selling. You know, sell yourself well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you have something, mm -hmm. some jobs that you've done recently yeah. that, that yeah. are, you know, nice, you might want to mention those. Yeah, of course. Uh, if, if you can, you're not under NDA. some greats and people exactly. that you might write. Um, <laughs> don't send the Snapchats. This is my Facebook posting. No. But, I mean, let's say... Send the demos that are appropriate, multiple right. demos, not just one demo. Right. Um, agents want to know that they can, you know, make you money across in different areas. Yeah. Um, are there any demos that you would not care to listen to? 
there is such a thing as being over demoed. You yeah. know, I've had people before send yeah. me to their website and they had 15 demos and like, you know, one e every type of commercial that ever existed. And, yeah. Well, and if they were all awesome demos, I would actually say, good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you got mm -hmm. it. Those are great demos. But, you know, only half of them were professional and made yeah. and decent and the other ones were really kind of off. And so it's like, just put your best foot forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, and part of it just seems like common sense. So it's hard to describe, you know, because I, I, there's no formula. Right. There is no formula for writing right. a letter that gets you signed. Right. There isn't. There isn't. There's just, are whatever you're selling at that moment, the person you're selling to, does it present as an opportunity to them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And you can't control that. Right. No, you can't. No. Yeah. And let's say that somebody, again, you know, maybe the demo's great, maybe they're great, the letter's on point. But if someone doesn't get a response or gets passed on. Yes. What do you recommend they do with that information that they can keep moving forward? How do you recommend it depends, they take It that? depends if there's information given to them on why. Okay. Um, so if, if, if there's no response to your email whatsoever, it could mean that I was out pitching business that day and never got back to those emails. Mm -hmm. You know, I got back just to the emails I need to get back to and just didn't get a chance to listen to those emails. And right. sometimes I put them to the side and then listen to them once a week or listen to them. And I think a lot of agents, you know, I hear do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fairly typical. Um, so sometimes it can mean we just missed it. Right. So I do tell people follow up again. If you get an out of office from an agent, more than likely, you'll it's like gone down a black hole oh, yeah. of emails, and you just have, need to follow up when they're in the office again. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, uh, so I would say that's it's you might want to be persistent if you didn't get a response, mm -hmm. um, because that might mean that they just yeah, didn't get a got, chance to mm -hmm. see it, um, and you're putting it to the top of their inbox. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that you need to write every three days, but right. you know, and and you can and be a human about it. You know, I've had people just reforward their original email to me over <laughs> every single week without anything. You know, hey, you know, I wrote to you last week, and I wasn't sure if you had time yet or not, but you know, this happened, and I would love for you to take a listen to this when you get a sec. Right. You know, just mm -hmm. in in that sort of way. Right. Um, Typically, I will try to, especially if they're a referral of someone that I know, I'll try to actually give them, you know, a, a reason for mm -hmm. it and give them the tools of what I think they need to do next. So I will usually give very specific instructions. Okay, cool. Um, you know, whether I think it's that they're a little more green or raw in the area and they may need to get coaching in commercials and, right. you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, Good. So you actually take the time to kind of like... Yeah, usually if they're, if they're a referral, yes. Yeah. You know, um, I don't want to create the expectation. No, no, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's always yeah. the case. Here's just, my 100 point our, strategy plan. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. No. We, well, you know, we do our best, um, mm -hmm. but we, at the end of the day, we've got to represent the talent yeah. you know, we're working with. Well, that concludes part one with uh, Heather Dame with Atlas Talent. We're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, and keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and don't forget to leave some comments below. We love you guys. Thanks for watching, and just remember... You, you always, always have, have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.